Hello and welcome to Digital Goulash. My name is Chucky and today we're going to look at how to access Adobe Camera Raw features using Photoshop Elements. Now if you already have Photoshop Elements open, let's go to the file open. Now on some of the different versions of Elements you have an actual open as. And what you want to do in that case is you want to open as Camera Raw. Now in my case I'm using Photoshop Elements 9 and I just have an open command here. So I'm going to select open and then I'm going to pick a picture and at the very bottom right here we're going to change this format from JPEG to Camera Raw and then I'll explain why we want to do that. When we select open it takes us away from the Photoshop Elements interface and takes us into the Adobe Camera Raw interface. Now you'll notice there are some tools up here at the top very similar to Elements and then on the right hand side we have a lot of sliders that we can control. Now why would we want to do this? Now the first thing is is that when you take a picture in JPEG, your camera throws away a lot of the information. So when we want to go to change it or kind of enhance the picture a little bit, a lot of that information that we would be normally using has been thrown away because the camera picks some of that stuff for us. Now ultimately you should be shooting in RAW for anything that you want to use as a final print take a really nice raw picture and then you can go in Adobe Raw and change some of the things that might not have been good enough when you were taking the picture such as maybe you didn't know the white balance the color temperature or maybe the cloudy day changed right as you were taking a picture you could go back in Adobe Raw and you can change some of those settings so let's go ahead and take a look at these settings these are very basic the Photoshop Elements Adobe Camera Raw and Lightroom have lots more uh, options right here on the right hand side. Now the first thing is is navigating around. When you're doing this you want to zoom into the areas that you want to see when you're changing. So as you can see as the default I have the magnifying glass open. But maybe, uh, let's see, I zoom into this and maybe I want to move this around. Well you could click the hand tool or you could use some keyboard shortcuts. The H is the hand tool. When I hit hand, you'll notice it turns into a hand and I can move the picture around. Now, of course, if you have a Mac or if you have a tablet or a, uh, a laptop that has an actual scroll function on there, you can also scroll using this. Now, if you want to get back to the zoom tool, you hit Z and that will take you back to the zoom tool. Now, you notice as a default, it is plus. So if you hold the option on a Mac or Alt on the Windows, PC, you can click and zoom back out. Now obviously you have the zoom controls over here as well. Now this one right here is a white balance. So what you want to do in this case is what you want to find something that is pure white. You want to select this and then it's going to recorrect your white balance. This one is the crop tool. This one gives you a few options when you click, click on crop. The one to one is going to give you the square and of course we're familiar with 5x7s and 9x16s might not be too familiar to you but 9x16 is widescreen. Now if you had a picture and maybe it wasn't this uh, background right here or the horizon wasn't level what you could do is you could go here to the straightening tool and click on this and you would click on your horizon and draw a line on your horizon and then it's going to straighten out your horizon for you. Now of course the controller command Z the undo works in this as well. There is also a red eye right here which you can click on to the red eye and then there's a few preferences right here. Now normally when you change settings in your camera raw it saves them into a raw database on your computer so that every time you open up that file in raw it saves all of your settings. The sidecar XMP file what it does is it puts an actual XMP file with your picture and then saves all the changes in that XMP file. Let's go ahead and hit cancel here. The next thing we can do is we can rotate this. The quick rotate for the uh, right and left for 90 degrees is L and R. So if you hit L or R on your keyboard, you can do that very quickly. You can also do it through the buttons right here, but I like to use the keyboard. Now I'm going to take this back to my zoom tool right here, and we're going to go through all of these. Now when you're taking a picture, there's color temperature the daylight temperature is roughly 5,000 or maybe 5,500 Kelvin. This is just a measurement of 
the heat or the temperature of the actual light. So that would be in Kelvin. Now as you can see, if you slide it to the right and slide it to the left, this will make it either more yellow or more blue. So if I slide this to the right, it'll kind of warm things up a little bit. And as I take it to the left, it's going to cool things down a little bit. So what you can think of is, is that this is a major shift from blue to yellow. And as you can see right here in your histogram, this also tells you what colors you have and where your spikes are. And as you can see, there's the red, green, and blue channels right here. Now the tint you can think of as a fine tune. This one fine tunes it to green or magenta. So after you've kind of, maybe we want to warm this up just a little bit. Maybe it was kind of a little bit uh, grayer. The plane was a little bit grayer. Then we can take this one and we can fine tune this to where it's a little bit more green or a little bit more magenta right here. Now in the exposure, this one is going to give you the exposure. It's going to take the entire picture and then it's going to increase the exposure such as this, which is going to make a lot of the whites blow out really easily when you do that. So be careful when you're using exposure because it's mainly for if the entire picture was not exposed correctly. Okay, number two on the list of the sliders here is the recovery. And this recovery is going to recover a certain amount of the highlights that might have gotten blown out when you maybe exposed it a little bit too much. So let's go ahead and take, let's uh, expose it up a little bit. And let's see how the recovery works here. And the recovery is going to recover some of the highlights. So as you can see, my clouds are starting to come back right there when you go into the recovery mode. Now you don't want to over recover here because all this is doing is this is taking the highlights and it's dropping it down a little bit on the exposure. So it's kind of like uh, an exposure just for highlights right there. So you can recover some of these. So you want to be sure to use the exposure and the recovery tool with each other to try to figure out how much of the highlights that you want to bring back. Of course the fill light this is kind of the dark areas and then the blacks are your shadows. So fill light, it's any of the areas that might be dark. We're going to slide that to the right. I don't have a whole lot of dark pieces of the picture, but as you can see anywhere that's a little bit dark, it's going to bring that back. And then what the blacks are going to do is it's going to take our shadows and it's going to deepen the blacks on our shadows and make things more of a true black here. Now brightness and contrast are just like they seem. Uh, it makes things either brighter and makes these things a little bit more contrasty right there. The next tab we have on the list is the clarity slider tab. Now the clarity slider tab is just exactly what it sounds like. So when I slide it to the right, it makes the image look a little bit clearer by, uh, I wouldn't say sharpening the detail, but it makes it a little bit more clear and defined the as far as the image goes. So if I take this clarity to the right, you can see that the image becomes a little more pronounced because a lot of the dark pieces right here are being sharpened in a way. So it's not a really good explanation of it. But let me take it to the left and show you that now we're getting to that dreamy effect. And you can also get this uh, nice effect here by using clarity in the opposite direction where it kind of fuzzes everything out so that everything isn't quite as in sharp detail. So if you want something that's a little bit more clear, you can enhance by using the clarity slider right here. Now the vibrance and saturation right here, what you can see right here is that there's a little slider with like a hue on there. And what this is going to do is it's going to provide you with a few of the hue tones right there. We're going to take this and we're going to change the vibrance here and we're also going to super saturate this just to kind of show you right there what those tabs do. So there's the vibrance and the saturation. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take this and I'm going to reset this. Now I can go back to default right here and I can also choose auto. The auto is going to pick a few things for me. It's going to bump up the clarity, it's going to bump up the vibrance, and it's going to bump up the saturation. Let's go ahead and go back to default because I kind of like that. And I'm going to go over here and I'm going to go back to camera raw defaults right there. Okay, the next tab that we have over here at the very top is the detail. Now this is how much sharpening that you want to 
do to your image. So the amount of sharpening right here, if you think of it as kind of a stream of water, how much sharpening is this slider? And then the radius would be the intensity or the amount or how big around the hose would be. So this is the radius right here, the intensity of the sharpening. And this is the amount of sharpening. So do we want to intensely sharpen this, which this would be way too much, but do we want to intensely sharpen this, maybe 1.3 or 1.4, and the amount of sharpening, do we want, how much do we want to sharpen the image? So right there. So between these two pieces right here, the amount and the intensity of the sharpen, that's what you're going to use for sharpening. The next thing that we have is a luminance noise reduction. So when we zoom in on this, and we do want to zoom in on this before we, let me click H to move this around so that you can see some of the modeling that is going on right here. Now when we take this luminance right here, this softens up a lot of the modeling. As you can see, a lot of that went away right here. But the only problem that you have with this noise reduction in the luminance is, is sometimes you lose some of the sharpening that you just created right here. So don't overdo on the luminance noise reduction right here because sometimes it has the illusion of reducing some of your sharpening right there. The next thing that we have is this color noise reduction. Sometimes we get artifacts that are kind of red, green, kind of misplaced artifacts right here. And if you get any of that going, and I don't seem to have too many, much of that going on in this picture, but if we had little green and blue and yellow artifacts in here, we would want to take the color noise res uh, reduction down this slider bar right here. If you knew that you wanted to provide a little bit more clarity for all of your images and you wanted to bump up the vibrance a little bit of all your images right here you could use this little slide out box right here and save it as your new defaults so every time you bring a color picture or every time you bring a picture into RAW this is going to automatically apply these settings now when you save this out you will have to save your image because none of these adjustments have been placed on your picture yet. These are just adjustments that are sitting on a file. When you hit save, it will actually save those adjustments onto your image. But right now, it's not doing anything to your image. Now, when you click on open image, it will take you to Photoshop with all of those settings already saved for you. This is Chucky from Digital Goulash. I hope you learned something in Adobe Camera Raw. If you have any questions, please ask me in the comments below. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe. Cheers.